A very good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to Bogan's Global Weather and Climate Report Edition 15 from Gurin in Brittany, France. Uh, I do apologise for the large and loud humming in the background. I've got a freezer running currently um, or waiting to get loaded with fresh veg to go back across into Kent. Um, so I'm kind of hoping um, that I can get loaded soon and then head back up to the ferry at Cannes for the overnight crossing back to Portsmouth again. But um, So I do apologise for the, the background noise. A lot of things going on at the moment. The tropics is um, certainly alive and kicking. It has been now, of course, with Fiona impact in eastern Canada. Very quick, I want to make mention uh, and correct um, something I said in yesterday's video with regards to it being the strongest ever recorded. Um, you know, the, the central pressure being, I think, either 931 or 932 millibars, strongest ever in recorded history. So um, somebody had um, pointed out about, um, you know, kind of declaring it the worst ever. I, I, I have to admit that I, I wasn't kind of implying that. I am uh, of a, a very strong belief the systems that um, are strongest on record uh, these days um, is very much uh, speculative because we don't know what happened hundreds, if not thousands of years ago. So I just want to kind of clear that one up that um, I'm, I'm making mention of the fact that it was certainly within recorded time, recorded history, it is certainly the strongest system to ever impact Canada. And um, it's going to be... Um, interest when more data is collected with regards to Fiona and its impacts, uh, you know, devastating impacts may I add across parts of Nova Scotia, um, New Brunswick, Newfoundland, etc, etc. Ian, now a, a Category 1 hurricane with uh, maximum sustained winds of 75 miles per hour. Uh, we do have um, the forecast now projected to go uh, into Florida, of course, that has been the projection for several days now but it looks as if the track is shifting slightly further east towards Tampa as opposed to the Bight of Florida also made mention of the fact that um, very few if not uh, any hurricanes have been recorded to hit the Bight of Florida right in this corner here very very unusual uh, and rare meteorologically speaking but it looks as if this is the real deal Ian is going to come ashore Possibly to the west of Tampa Bay, worst case scenario, drives a very strong storm, stir, st storm surge in Tampa Bay, likely to be a major hurricane at the time of landfall or close to it. So certainly uh, we need to keep a very close eye on that. The remnants of, of Hermine, by the way, had significant impacts on the Canary Islands. I have to also apologise that I made mention it disappeared and that was it, it was all said and done. That is not, of course, the case. We've seen flash flooding through the streets of parts of the Canary Islands as the system, albeit, uh, was downgraded below uh, depression status. But the remnants of Hermine did have significant impacts, wind and particularly rainfall uh, through the island chain, loose South Grand Canaria, possibly Tenerife, was greatest affected by that. We also, of course, have a um, uh, super typhoon that has impacted the um, the uh, Philippines of the Western Pacific Ocean and that has made Im major impacts as well. Let's have a quick look through some of the tweets that I've recently retweeted. So plenty of heat across parts of uh, the southwest, in particular uh, down around southern, uh, southern Nevada into the southeast of California, southwest Arizona, no surprise here, parts of Texas, the mid-south, the southeast, uh, still holding on to summertime warmth. But interestingly enough, up at uh, 8,400 metres above sea level, or 8,400 feet, should I say, uh, in California at Body State Park, the temperature dropped to 20 Fahrenheit, or minus 7 Celsius. In stark contrast to that, the temperature uh, a few hundred miles to the south, at Death Valley recorded 110 or 43 Celsius. So dramatic contrast in the uh, uh, between you know some of the highest parts of California versus the lowest part of California. 
So we've got um, several systems in the Western Pacific at the moment. So it's interesting how the tropics have livened up uh, with uh, Storm Noru uh, significantly affecting the Philippines, one of the hardest hit areas in the world for tropical cyclones, of course. It is expected to head towards Vietnam, towards the middle portion of this work week. Here is Storm Noru, uh, strengthened from 50 mile an hour to 155 miles per hour, one of the fastest tropical cyclones, and again, ever recorded uh, to you know, strengthen within such a short time frame, a 24 hour period of course, uh, very dramatic stuff indeed. And of course, uh, the frontal system across the uh, across northern France, where I am at the moment, rain and wind has been the player over recent uh, hours. The frontal system that uh, was sinking south over the UK during the course of yesterday is now over the north of France. Um, so that's quite interesting. And of course, here is a tweet 932.6 millibars recorded at the uh, Har Island, Nova Scotia, in Canada, the lowest. It recorded the barometric pressure in Canadian history recorded uh, I have to emphasize so what is going on at the moment we've got a few interesting things to speak about now the the northern hemisphere has of course been very very warm this is the year to date temperatures off weatherbell.com Asia uh, and Europe Eurasia as a whole very warm year to date cooler than normal across Africa Southwest China, India, Pakistan, Australia, central portions of uh, Canada into the Northern Plains, western flank of South America has been below normal temperature wise here. But interestingly enough, we are seeing some subtle changes taking place. This is the month of September so far. Very warm across Greenland, as you can see, compared to normal North America. But notice Europe and Asia, a big turnaround versus what we've seen June, July and August. Now, one of the reasons why I think that is the case is June, June, June July, August, very hot conditions, the heat focused over the northern uh, portions of the the hemisphere and a, sh a complete and utter shutdown of the tropics. Now we have start to see heat being lost over the higher uh, uh, portions of the hemisphere, mid latitudes, has lost a lot of the heat we've seen a, a decrease in pressure and we've had an increase in the tropics and i think what's taking place here is folks that we are seeing the transfer within the tropics um of heat getting uh, distributed up towards the polar region and therefore we've actually kind of triggered a negative north atlantic and arctic oscillation if you notice here it has been rather negative during the month of September, but June, during June, July and August, if you notice, it's been predominantly positive. But then once we started to lose the heat waves across parts of North America, Asia and indeed Europe in particular, we've seen an increase in the tropics and therefore we've seen the AO and NAO going negative here. So that's a very interesting turnaround. What are things going to take place over the next few weeks? I think the, uh, the Arctic Oscillation, NAO, will go neutral. We are going to see some stormy weather uh, moving in towards the end of this week. In the UK and Ireland's first autumn storm of the season. And we are going to, of course, see Hurricane Ian make impact on, on, um, on Florida. We're also going to see the westward progress of Noru in the Western Pacific. So therefore, we're not seeing systems coming as much north as opposed to kind of west or east. So therefore, we're going to start to see uh, a shift in the upper air pattern across the northern hemisphere here. So this is something I'm keeping an eye on and watching as we go forward. By the way, the transfer of heat from tropics to the high latitudes can also um, eventually down the road cause sudden stratospheric warmings for example so please stay tuned if you're enjoying the content today and in recent days please hit please hit that subscribe button and support me uh, uh, you know and, and and drop a comment let me know whether you're enjoying the content or even if you're not I, I don't mind either way but certainly please like share and subscribe if you haven't already done so with these videos there is a lot of things going on and i do 
endeavor to try and keep you posted as much as I can. But Fiona, ex-Hurricane Fiona, of course, now transferring a lot of heat up through Greenland and into the Arctic region. This is the Northern Hemispheric view, 850 millibar temperature normally here. And you notice here that as we pump heat into the Arctic region, we're forcing loads of cold in the Eastern North America, into Western portions of Europe here, the AO, NAO goes negative. But what I think will eventually happen is we're going to start to see a turnaround taking place here where we start to see um, warmth returning eastern North America and western portions of Europe here. But certainly at the moment we've got a, a temperature anomaly of 0 0.3 Celsius above normal across the planet. We've got a, the warmest compared to normal over Greenland as you can see again uh, relatively speaking. Uh, of course, that's forcing cold into Western Europe, France, uh, Spain, Portugal, Central Europe, warm things up a little bit over the east. Eastern portions of North America below normal and a large swath of Russia below normal, as you can see here. So uh, that is the situation globally at this moment in time. And I probably have forgotten to make mention of certain things in this video today. I do apologize for that. Uh, but there is a lot of things going on, of course, at this moment in time. Uh, let's have a quick look and see if there's anything else I can show you before all is said and done here. Um, is there anything that I can show? I'm not so sure. We've got some interesting tweets here. Uh, below normal temperatures, uh, very cold compared to normal, actually. High elevations of the Balkans, northern portions of Greece. There was the milky sunshine uh, yesterday afternoon for myself as I drove towards Lorient in the northwest of France but then of course the rains arrived earlier this morning uh, and I think that is about it for now I'm afraid folks but certainly a lot of things going on uh, around the world um, we've got uh, still heat wave conditions across parts of Asia we've also got below normal temperatures snow is up there uh, of course starting to increase as you would expect um, across uh, Siberia and even parts of Canada as well so, um, you know, winter is coming and uh, I'll certainly be uh, continuing to, to follow that and share with you what is going on around the world. Hope you enjoy the rest of your, what day is it today? It is Monday. Enjoy the rest of your Monday and I'll hopefully be back again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.